Hi everybody, it's Kelly from Let's Get Clacking and next to me I have Robin from Snippy Sisters. Today we are going to be taking a look at the Cameo Fall in conjunction with the Battle of the Machines. So we're going to be showing why you should get a Cameo Fall and why it is the best machine. <laughs> so in this video we are going to learn how to use Silhouette's trace function and we're going to take a selfie and trace the details of your face in order to create a cut file we're going to cut your face out of vinyl and stick it on a balloon and the end result looks like this this is the cameo 4 in front of us now silhouette have been around for about 10 years and every two years or so they bring out a new machine starting with one ending with number four over here cameo one and two have a one mil cutting depth Cameo 3 can cut 2 mils thick and Cameo 4 can cut 3 mils thick. That's the difference between the 3 and the 4. The 4 can just do a little bit more. They would also make the portrait. They have a 1, 2 and 3 out and those are A4 in size whereas the Cameo is 30 centimeters in size. All the machines cut paper and vinyl equally but if you're looking to do some interesting things and thicker things, craft foam, leather, balsa wood, then the Cameo 4 is the best bet. Cool, thanks for that information. So, let's get clacking. Okay, so we're moving to Silhouette Studio and what I've done is I've taken a selfie, as you can see with the beautiful background behind Stunning. me. Stunning! <laughs> and there are two different ways that we can start off with this. So first of all, we can go into remove background. So remove.bg, there's the URL. And we can literally just drag the image into remove background and it'll pretty much remove the entire background for you. So it's a super quick, easy way to do it, but the image is quite a, quite a low quality, so it's not the greatest. And then we can click download and then you can drag it into Silhouette Studio. And as you can see, it's a very small image. Okay, the second way, uh, I'm going to quickly zoom through it because obviously it takes quite a bit longer. We can just drag the image into Silhouette Studio I'm just going to uh, rotate it and then just resize it so that it's a little bit more manageable. Maybe a little bit bigger, that one's a bit small. Um, I'm going to just crop it down. You could use your knife tool to slip the top and bottom, but Kelly's doing it the, the correct and effective way. <laughs> it's a nice trick on how to use your point editing your advantage yes so then we can go to the magnet trace on the side and you click on the magnet trace and essentially what this does is it allows you to kind of manually trace around the background uh, it does have it obviously works like a magnet where it automatically locks to where it thinks that the edge is so it's not terribly hard to work with it as you can see it only takes a, a few seconds or so Every now and then it misbehaves, but um, it's a pretty great tool. Okay, so there we go, trace and detach, and then you can just delete the background. So obviously that's a little bit funny there. So then you can just use that point to Put back. Pull it, yeah, put back essentially what it's taken out of the picture, uh, which is very useful. So let's just correct that one there. So if you don't have internet access and remove background isn't an option for you, your Silhouette software will allow you to do this. And Magnetic Trace is available in Design Edition. Yeah, Design and Business Edition. So then it's generally recommended to change into black and white and to change the contrast. And we can do that by looking at the circle here with two different shades on it. So the first is the gray shade. So we can just move that toggle all the way to 100 and click Apply. Then we move on to the third one that looks like a little bit of a sun. And we can increase the contrast. So effectively what we are doing here guys is we're using Silhouette's built-in Photoshop to make the photo more traceable. A trace works on seeing light over dark and you're trying to make the contrast between light and dark stronger so that you have a better trace. These steps are not necessary but they will lead you to having a better product at the end of the day. Yeah, definitely. And then we can go straight onto the trace area, so the little butterfly-looking butterfly thing. Slash 
piece of toast looking thing. Yeah, it's a very strange picture. But anyway, so we go and we drag it down over the picture and you wait a few seconds for it to go yellow. You can just click trace as it is now, or you can play with the threshold a little bit. It will look weird at this stage, guaranteed. Trust the process, carry on, trust the process. So I, with this one, I had it, um, I think it was around 68 or so. Let's just try it on that side. So yellow is good, guys. When the trace feature sees darkness, it kind of snaps to that dark and it's attaching itself to everything dark as opposed to light. So yellow seems like a strange color, but like Kelly said, trust the process and go through these stages and you'll see what it looks like in the end. Yeah, definitely. So we click trace, we wait a few seconds for the computer to register. And then again, this looks very strange, I know, but then we fill it with a color and immediately we can see exactly why we trust the process here because that actually looks really good and we can see why we changed it to black and white why we increased the contrast because we can see how good this picture now looks now there are of course a few other steps that you can hand that you can you can cut it just like this if you wanted to there are a few things that we would recommend doing to this picture to make it a little bit more weeding friendly so the first one would be to weld the image. Okay, so welding then ends up like this. And what you're doing here is you, you can then deselect it. You then select only the main image. You pull that out. And obviously the hair, especially with this, like I've got blonde hair, so this looks like if you had darker hair, this would be a lot easier. But then what you can do is you can actually highlight all of this and delete it. The reason you're deleting it is if you try to cut all those tiny little files, it would take a very long time to cut and you would also end up with a very jagged, messed up end. They, they're not necessary. So what we're doing is we're eliminating the unnecessary cuts and keeping the largest one. Yeah. So now what we do, do you think we should cut it down a little bit on the sides? So I would use your knife tool to slit it there because we're looking for face only. Can't we just... You can start on that point and then move the points up to there and how that would look. Please hold, we're <laughs> processing your information. <laughs> the, just to let you know what has just happened, the computer has frozen while we're trying to edit the design or, or break it up into its bits and pieces because this file is pretty large. Kelly's got the original photo, the copied photo and the traced photo all in one uh, screen and it takes a fair amount of computing power. What we haven't done so far is click save. It's the first thing that I do when I make a file of this size because my computer isn't as... Sometimes it doesn't behave itself. When I overload it with information, it just says not responding and then dies and then I want to. So usually what I do when I start with a file like this is I say file, save as, save to desktop or wherever you keep your stuff. That way, if it does crash while you're editing, at least you know that you're definitely getting it back. Good idea. So we're going to double click it again and then we're just going to remove out most of the t-shirt. So I'm going to click on a point and delete these. So there are a few different ways to get rid of the t-shirt. We can do point editing like we're doing now or you can take your knife tool and you can slice away at the bits that you don't need and then drag it away, whichever makes more sense to you. You see it's going clockwise now. I actually need to start from this side. So we're going to use the knife tool now to get rid of the bits and pieces. So we're going to start off the edge, correct, and then slice inwards and go all the way out to this end and let go. Processes. Again, it takes a second because we have a fairly large image. Usually if you're working on one image only, it wouldn't take this long. Your knife is set to continue cutting afterwards, so you can slice away again, and you can go back to select now and select your two shoulders manually and, and delete them. them. And then we just delete those little parts off. I would even um, 
I would slice down there to your hair, there to your hair, and get rid of this black bit because we just want your face. Okay. Okay, and then we go back to the select tool and we delete that. And now we can see there's a whole bunch of other little dots and things like that. So we can actually try and remove some of those. But it's going to take out the whole eyebrow. So what we're doing now is deleting unnecessary points bit by bit. Look like a pirate. <laughs> Oi, me matey. Okay, so now we've got most of those little bits removed. So I'm going to double click the design to open up the point editing. And then I'm going to click simplify to try and reduce the number of points that there are in the design. This might take a while, depending on what kind of a computer you have. Um, I'm not using my monster at home, I'm using my laptop, so this takes a little bit longer. And it sometimes freaks out a little bit, but it will reduce the points, which is great. Um, and it will make the file a little bit easier to process. So if you're someone who works at point editing, all of those points can make you slightly nauseous if you know what you're looking at. It does mean a jagged line. Even though we have simplified twice, there are still a <laughs> load of points there. But don't worry about it. We have tried it and cut it with all of these points. It doesn't really make a difference. The only difference it makes is that it does slow down the cutting process. So when you normally cut for five minutes, you're now cutting for 10 minutes, which isn't really a big deal. This design is going onto a balloon for one day, so a slightly jagged line doesn't matter. Do not let your OCD overtake. Do not spend 10 hours cleaning up these points. It is not necessary, although you really want to. <laughs> Okay, so now we can group them all together by pressing Ctrl G, or you can right click group like a normal person. And then we're going to resize it to this. Okay, it's actually almost exactly the size that we need it. We wanted it around 20 centimeters. Um, so that's perfect because we've already measured the balloon that we have. So that's going to be great. Now we can go into the send panel and we can see that obviously the cut lines are already on. Um, and we're going to be able to then send it to the Cameo to cut. We will need, we'll just need to check your cut setting. Do you have the, we have the right cut settings? So one of the nice features of the Silhouette is you do not need to use a cutting mat to cut your file. Vinyl essentially has a cutting mat built, built into it. It has a piece of backing paper. So what we're going to do is switch the cutting mat off in the software and then feed the vinyl directly into the machine. There are three reasons we like to cut vinyl without a cutting mat. Number one, it saves money. Using your mat each time costs you a few cents, meaning you have to replace your mat sooner rather than later. Number two, um, you're able to load and unload fast. Er, you're able to load and unload quicker, meaning it saves you time. And then thirdly, and most importantly, you're able to cut larger than the size of your cutting mat. With vinyl, you're not restricted to a 12 by 24 mat. You can cut 30 centimeters by three meters long if you want to. So we're gonna turn the cutting mat off in the software. The reason we're doing this is because the when you have the cutting mat open in the software, the machine knows that it needs to cut yay high because there's a mat in the way. When you put your cutting mat off, the blade is told by the software to lower its cutting depth because it's not compensating for a mat. It's just gonna cut lower to the height of the vinyl. So have a look at your cut settings now. We're gonna to go to page setup and cutting mat currently is auto cameo. We're gonna switch it off and say none. And you'll actually see that the cutting mat disappears. It's no longer visible in your software. And now you can very simply load your vinyl directly into your machine without the mat being there. Just please note that another change you need to make on the physical machine, the only change you make on the physical machine, is to bring the right hand roller in, which was over there. You're going to slide it in and to show you how to do that, we're going to zoom in quickly. This is where I've put it for this purpose, but usually it's on the furthest. I only want to hear one click from the furthest groove, which is where it is usually. We're just going to press down 
this button to unlock it and we're going to slide it into any of these two and here it grip in and close it again if you have the cameo one or two it works slightly differently you have to twist it out of the groove and slide it up please note that you must put the foot in one of these four gaps please do not leave this roller in the center because it will not grip correctly one two three four click back up now we're able to load our vinyl in again we're lining up with the arrows just holding it underneath the two feet so it gives a grip and load there we go ready to cut before we actually start the cutting process of this we need to make sure that we go through our number one most important part of cutting anything and that is do a test cut every time every time very 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 important okay so we're going to start off with vinyl glossy it's already on vinyl glossy force 10 we're going to leave our overcut off purely because it would take far too long in this one um speed five do we have a blade of one on the other one? Uh, we, because I'm not using a standard uh, premium or ratchet blade, I'm using my CB09 blades, we do have to manipulate the settings slightly. Before, when we tried um, cutting from my end, we were using a blade depth of two and a force of 10. Just change the tool there from auto to ratchet. And play, well, blade depth doesn't matter because it's not automatically setting. So we're gonna try on a force of 10 and we're gonna click test. And let's see what happens. So the machine has cut a small triangle with a square around it in the top left corner of the mat. And the idea is to be able to weed the square away, leaving the triangle behind. So you should be left with this. The idea is to have a look and see did the blade cut deep enough to cut into the vinyl? And once you have weeded that square away, you're gonna lift up the triangle and have a look how deep did that triangle cut into the backing paper of the vinyl? Did it slice all the way through or has it just made a small indentation like it did now? So that is a perfect test cut. It has passed the test and we're able to carry on cutting. Just note that if we hadn't done a test cut and it had cut too deep, we would have wasted seven, eight minutes cutting this file and the piece of vinyl because the settings were wrong to start off with. Hence the importance of the test cut. make sure that my cut actually did happen that it worked otherwise we could send it again but we're good so I'm going to unload and now let the reading begin Transfer tape comes in clear and in paper. I like the clear one because it has a grid and you're able to align your image quite nicely. So I've just cut a piece off and we're going to put this transfer tape onto the image. The reason we're using it is it allows us to pick up the whole image one time and transfer from the backing paper to the balloon. And the scraping tool which I should have next to me. Right, so now we're going to use a scraping tool just to get rid of any bubbles that might be here. 
I'm flipping the design over and I'm peeling the back off the vinyl, leaving the vinyl stuck to the tape. Easy does it. I actually want that to pick up, so I'm not going to leave it there. All right, so now I'm just going to eyeball where the center of the balloon is. Now I'm going to use my scraper to get a bit of tack. So vinyl cures over time. Right now it will be very easy to lift the vinyl off. So a trick to get this to work quite nicely if it is coming off immediately is to leave the vinyl for an hour and then come back and take your transfer tape off. But we're going to try and wing it just as is. Now, see, as you can see, what she's doing is while she's rolling the transfer tape back, some of the pieces are actually staying on the transfer tape. So what you do is you kind of just take your nail. I mean, obviously, we've got nice long nails, so we can do that. You, or you can take your weeding tool and just flick it off the vinyl, off the, the transfer tape, and have it stick down onto the surface. And then you can continue rolling back. Just getting Kelly's nostril to stay behind. <laughs> So I have one bubble here that is bothering me, so I'm going to use my scissors. Remember, we're not working on a flat surface, so there's one bubble that's bothering me. There's a bit of an overlap, so I'm going to use my scissors just to slit underneath that bubble. Careful not to pop my balloon. And then lay one flat and the other on top of it, and that bubble has disappeared. You can do that in a few places if you're working with a large balloon, but I think... We did a pretty good job. How's that? <laughs> okay, so again, cost-wise, this piece of promo vinyl, maybe, well, it was an off-cut, but maybe 8 Rand. The balloon was 25 Rand at Chinatown. Took us about an hour to take the photo, trace it, cut it, weed it, apply it, and you've got a really cool custom project for your friend's birthday. Happy birthday, my darling. Thank you. <laughs>